The China tiger is so rare that the birth of just these cubs has meant an increase of between 5 and 10 percent to the entire China tiger population on planet Earth. While 60 China tigers are cared for in zoos and breeding centers, it is unlikely that more than a score still roam the wild. Yet in China, these magnificent cats are still called King of the Beasts. The China tiger is also believed to be the eldest of the tiger species and probably the ancestor of all others. But because of human population pressure on its habitat, it is now faced with extinction. Those China tigers that have survived, whether in captivity or in the wild, eke out a sad existence in less than ideal surroundings. Now though, there is hope. When I realized that South China tiger is going extinct, I said, no, we must do something before we let them die. While conservationists argued not just about how, but also whether to save the China tiger, Beijing-born Li Zhuan, a former fashion executive, took a different line. It is time for us to adjust our mindset, to stop asking what should be done for the China tiger, and to begin demonstrating what can be done. So Li developed and then applied a rescue program so radical it could transform China's natural history. Part of the problem was that China itself lagged behind in conservation programs. Although China had plenty of zoos, it had few reserves where native Chinese species could flourish without human interference. Li lobbied hard for the creation of a protected pilot reserve where the China tiger could spearhead a broader effort to re-establish the species diversity of wild China. But that was only step one, and likely to take more time than perhaps the threatened China tiger had left. If it was to be rehabilitated, a critical issue was how to ensure it had the skills to survive in the wild. Li's big answer was South Africa, which had already impressed her with its advanced ecotourism projects and expertise in wildlife management. Since undeveloped land was more plentiful in South Africa, why not just begin the rewilding of the China tiger there? Li had been particularly impressed by the Pilonsberg Reserve, which had produced a surplus of wild lions that other reserves benefited from. The trick was to recreate a primary natural environment where predator and prey were ecologically balanced. She persuaded the Chinese government to allow her to take two zoo-born tiger cubs to a specially prepared site in South Africa where they could learn anew how to hunt and fend for themselves before being returned to a similar site in China. Gus von Dijk, instrumental in the introduction of predators to Pilonsberg, welcomed Li's initiative and set about devising a rehabilitation strategy for the China tiger. No captive-born large predators had ever been successfully reintroduced into the wild before. Although all predators are born with hunting instincts, without being suckled and taught by a mother, the hunting instinct is unlikely to develop sufficiently well to ensure survival. Where the mother herself has no experience of the wild, there is little she can pass on to her cubs. So instead, an experienced gamekeeper must play the role of teacher and educator. The two cubs selected for Li Zhuan's groundbreaking scheme were born of different mothers in the Shanghai City Zoo. Well before they arrived in South Africa via Hong Kong, they were given the names Cathay, the old European name for China and Hope. Once in South Africa, Cathay and Hope were introduced into a specially prepared rehabilitation center for the first phase of their training. Predictably, they showed little interest when presented with their first unpackaged meal. But a month later, that was already changing. Released into a larger site, they began enjoying their newfound freedom, and with it, a greater sense of confidence. They soon captured their first live prey, and instinctively looked for cover to enjoy the spoils. In China, meanwhile, the selection of the Chinese Tiger Pilot Reserve site was also progressing well. 
A team of Chinese and South African experts visited nine potential sites and narrowed the choice down to two, Zixi in Jiangxi province and Luyang in Hunan province. Back in South Africa, Cathay and Hope advanced to phase two of their training at the Chinese Tiger Rehabilitation Center in Lahu Valley Reserve. Here, they were soon joined by two new China-born youngsters, Tiger Woods and Madonna. The new arrivals settled down fast, readily devouring an offered antelope carcass. But for Cathay and Hope, it was time for their big test. They were introduced to live prey for the very first time. Until that moment, no one knew for sure whether rehabilitation would work, but history was made, and the China tiger may after all be saved. Li is determined that the first of many rehabilitated tigers will be returned to a secure nature reserve in China in 2008, the year of the Beijing Olympic Games. While saving the China tiger is her primary objective, she is deeply committed to the wider implications of her campaign. Biodiversity, the survival of as many species as possible in natural habitats, is critical not just for the species themselves, but also for our own immediate health and long-term well-being. Without appropriate action and investment today, humankind may not have much of a future either, but we still have a long way to go.